Hello everybody, Realm Builder Guy here, and welcome back to the channel and some more Bronze Age Imperator Rome. I want to apologize for my voice. I'm battling a bit of a head cold and <clears throat> today for some reason. My voice is failing occasionally, so bear with me. So thank you again for everybody that's been watching, commenting, liking the series so far and all the videos. Uh, odds are today will be the final installment here. Uh, we're, we're going to the big war here against Kisamos for the control of all of Crete. And I think at that point we've kind of gotten a feel for this mod and uh, what what's all possible. I will give my thoughts on the Bronze Age mod um, now that we've gone through a little mini-series with it towards the end, as well as talk about what the next or what the future of Imperator Rome looks like here on the channel. But, first off, let's pop all of these good things out here. And go into the best map mode on Paradox, which is the terrain map mode here. Map mode here. And we, of course, declared war last time. And we are going to execute our war plan. We will send the first level levy of Crete down here, and then send uh, these mercenaries just kind of hopscotching bit by bit through here in an attempt to see where the forces of Kisamos are and where they are heading. Let's, uh, let's see if we can draw them out into a battle. Again, here with these guys, we're just going to be slowly but surely moving through the provinces and seeing what exactly all happens while down here. Obviously, this is our main besieging force. Aha, uh -huh. there is a ship. The one, so they're going to go over here and blockade our ports. That's okay, we'll, we'll survive as we slowly make our way through the countryside here. Let's see, I'm not seeing any enemy troops just yet, but it's only a matter of time before they end up showing up. Ah, there they are. They have now come here, so let's see if we can break off the siege in time. That's a very, very large military contingent and they are not moving because of that fortress so they're gonna have to go around all the way around here and we'll see if we can escape before we engage in battle we cannot we're gonna lose that battle by losing that battle odds are we're also gonna lose more than just the battle. It was worth a try. They have much larger forces than I expected. So we are defeated. I'll send these guys around here. I thought I could maybe muster up the forces to go after them, but they took off before we could get there. Morale was beginning to waver at the camp when Argea stood up before the assembled soldiers and gave an inspirational speech. She convinced all who were present that the odds of battle were on their side. Using their extensive knowledge of military tactics, when the soldiers marched the next day, they did so with the confidence. Their victory was assured. So inspirational. So morale of armies plus 5%, and she gains 10 popularity. Which, that's actually kind of nice to gain that. Now these guys have to recover and the morale is completely trash. Oh, there comes that large force. Yeah, they're... Oh, uh, we're... We have an advantage in this battle? We're no longer importing horses, that's fine. Oh, uh, we do have an advantage here. It's because of the way their army was set up. The morale was still was a little bit lower. But the Battle of Charaki 
will go in our favor. Very, very nice. That was very beneficial. Trade ports. Uh, let's import some earthenware from Samaria. War exhaustion's relatively high right now. Um, let's see. We'll drop down the war exhaustion there. I'm just going to wait for these forces to rebuild their morale. And then, instead of splitting our forces, we're going to go in together. Because uh, that was a very good victory there from our mercenaries. So let's just move these guys down here. And just slowly make our way into the enemy's territory with these guys. Let's see if we can engage the army here. We will engage them. We cut them off and we will engage in this battle that we should win and we do. Their morale is so low that our combined forces add to a lot of strength there. But that's not that's not what we want. We need to go down here and get some of these fortresses. That is the main aim here is to go fortress for fortress through their territory. All right, so that siege has been won. Now what we could do is take these guys and go after them. Hunt them down and take them down in the field while we can. Now taking that entire province. See if we can cut them off and force a battle. They're going to stand their ground in Knossos. Will we be able to get them? We have the superior forces. Their morale is pretty good. Let's see. We will engage them here. Imminent battle. And it is in our favor. So we've made some decisive victories. The mercenaries are very, very important. That one victory from our mercenaries was really the, the ultimate decider here. All right. Now we will sell this. Well, Oh, we're suffering from melancholy. All right, we will send our forces now over here to siege down this fort. And that will give us a big control, zone of control here for this entire region as we whittle down their military. They got 950 left. And so, you know, we can maybe even completely destroy their levies here relatively soon. We'll just see what they end up doing. Another big siege has been won. The Council of Knossos have taken it upon themselves to free a sizable quantity of privately owned slaves. Yes, we will give them that. Uh, let's see. Those guys are still alive. So let's see if we can kind of head them off at the pass here, depending on where they are going. And we will engage them in battle here. And this should be another decisive victory for the forces of Knossos, which it is. And we will reestablish our control over that region. And now, let's see, where is the next major fort to go after? Not seeing any other ones other than all the way over here. So we will start our march through the enemy's territory. So the siege of Malemi has begun. And at this point, given that their levies have been utterly destroyed, um, not seeing any, any troops on the board anywhere, we take this fort, then we take that fort, and then we have everything of note under our control. So we have got troubling developments. Recently we have seen that our physician, Narcissus, as well as those under his charge, have been doing a disappointing job. It seems people having issues with them keep reporting back to us how difficult they are to work with. When talking to the man, he claims it is simply a matter of bureaucracy being difficult and that the funds for his office has been lacking lately. He makes sure to mention repeatedly that it would most likely work out if only they were given a few more funds. 
Uh, he's very corrupt. Um, he will not be given anything. Forget that. He's way too corrupt. All right, this is another infidelity issue. This is none of our business. So the next province has been sieged down. Now we will move our troops here to take this region in the name of Knossos. And that siege has been won. So now we control most of this. I'm trying to see what we need to take next. Let's go through here and take some of these cities while we are at it. We're, they're weary of war. We're going to hand out a small bonus. We're going to take in the Omen of Athene. Of course. And we are no longer importing earthenwares from Jaffa. There we go. We've got most of the control. And... Let's see. Head down here. Take that. And then we should be good to go. We'll accept that offer. We will import. Let's import horses from Jaffa. And Papyrus as well. Very, very nice. So at 99%, we are almost there. Let's see. Peace imminent. Met our war goals. Uh, there. Now we have everything. And we will go in here and sue for peace. So, let's go through here. We will take Phaistos, Eleutherna, Kudomi, Kisamos, and Armenoi. And with that, we will kill all the enemies. And there we have it. We pretty much have everything now, except we still have all these areas we need to colonize. We have decisions available. We unite Minoa. So, change his name to, Knossos changed to Minoa. Adds two citizen pops with uh, state culture and religion. Adds two freeman pops with state culture and religion. Knossos gains emergent capital with local population growth of plus 0.15%. Uh, Local civilization plus 10%, local freemen have a plus 8%, and can also gains two free province in net investments. And now we are simply known as Minoa. And decisions uh, into Crete. We acquire Phaistos, we conquer Knossos. And, I mean, we still have a few things here, making gains. We could do Annex Zakros, which here we're, we first need this. Gornia province is owned by Minoa. I mean, basically, we need to colonize all of those different regions. But we've achieved oh so much. We can now go to the economy. We can drop our army maintenance. And go to the military. We will disband all of our levies. Fantastic. And we still have these guys here. That we can get rid of. We will disband them. And we will accept that offer. And in a very short manner of time. Yes, I will accept that offer. We go to the Atlas mode. As you can see, we now have control over Crete. We still have um, areas that need to be colonized for this to really be completed. Um, let's see. I'll just hit, get rid of some of these. So, Alossos, what we need here is 750 of pop. And this is far, far away. A pop maximum of 3,000. So we can get there, but it's just going to take time. But Minoa has been formed. We have united all of Crete. And from here on, we would then, you know, wait and colonize everything, convert it, and have one unified Minoa and Crete. But now you can see everything that there is to see when it comes to what the Bronze Age mod can do. Now, of course, we could go from here and continue the series and conquer all these islands. 
But judging from the views and comments and so on, people are, are ready to move on to the next thing. So what is the next thing on the channel when it comes to Impair to Rome? So Impair to Rome, the issue is the active player numbers are dwindling. Uh, and that's just a fact. Uh, people, you know, there was a huge boost when 2.0 got launched. Then there was a, a significant drop off once Paradox said they're going to pause development for the rest of 2021 at least. Uh, and it's just been a steady drop ever since. Honestly, right now, more people are playing Victoria 2 actively, according to Steam stats, uh, than are playing Impaired or Rome on a daily basis. And, and Victoria 2 already doesn't have very, very high numbers. If you, if you look at it, there are about 1,000 daily active players um, at any given time on Steam playing Impaired or Rome. And Crusader Kings 3, I think there are about 26,000. So, I mean, that's just a scale. If you look at Warhammer uh, 2, Total War, I think, is like 35, 40,000. So, that's that's your scale you're dealing with here. Maybe 40,000 even for Hearts of Iron 4. It's just, ah, it's tough, it's tough, it's tough. And, and as a channel that's working on growth, uh, investing too much time in a game that really not a lot of people are that much interested, or that interested in, isn't worth it. So... I'm going to hit pause here. Um, it's going to be the end of the Bronze Age mod, but I am going to highlight Imperator Invictus. Uh, I did a video talking about the Imperator Invictus mod, and as such, I will go and we will do a mini-series there. And the nation I will be playing as, after talking to Snowlit, who's the head of the mod team there, so we're going to go with a Black Sea Greek Hellenic Republic. So we've played Sparta, we, we played a monarchy there, here with Minoa, Knossos. We played a monarchy here. So I think it's time to go into a republic. And the reason why I'm going to go with a republic is, especially the Black Sea Republics, because of all the decisions available to the Hellenic Republics of the Black Sea. Just to see the flavor and what's all available. So I hope you understand it. I hope you will stay tuned for that. That will launch in a few weeks. Until then, there's going to be a lot of Crusader Kings 3 content here on the channel, as well as a few other games I want to highlight uh, that I've been playing recently that are a ton of fun and I think you'll enjoy. And a few game reviews maybe here or there as well, and, and obviously some guides. Don't forget to check out my new channel, Fantasy Realm Guy. Um, link is down in the description. Fantasy Realm Guy is a lot of stuff you find here on Realm Builder Guy. So it's about strategy games with a leaning towards it's going to be fantasy. So we're talking, you know, fantasy overhaul mods for Crusader Kings 3. We're talking Divide and Conquer overhaul mod for Total War uh, Medieval 2. We're talking Warhammer 2, Warhammer 3 for Total War. On top of that, uh, computer roleplay games, especially isometric ones, uh, tabletop roleplay games, and a lot of stuff where I focus on world building uh, world building tools, map making, and writing and stuff like that in the setting of fantasy. So if you haven't done so already, go check out that channel. Right now, there's not a ton of content on there, uh, but more and more will be coming in the coming weeks and months. So until next time, I'm Realm Builder Guy. Thank you so much again for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button. Until next time, I will talk to you soon.